Hello, this is Chris from Pixelwix, and we're just showing you a new product called Projection Calculator. Now, Projection Calculator will let you design it completely in the virtual world all projection type environments. This means that you no longer have to take guesses. You can actually see for your own eyes what will work and what won't. So this is the startup screen, and you can see I can rotate the uh, world view and see uh, what's going on here. And we've got a screen already on there, which is happens to be a curved screen. And the measurements for the screen are either in uh, units of meters, feet, or inches. And you can translate between them at any time you feel like it. So let's go to screens. Um, the screens you don't have to draw, import, or anything. They just generate automatically. So um, I've got a cylinder screen selected. And I can type in any radius I wish to, or just uh, move the arrow keys and adjust the radius as you see. Uh, if we wanted to put a projector on this, we can just go to a projector, um, press the plus key. The projector immediately comes on the screen and then we can choose the projector. Uh, we can just go into the projector listings here, type in the brands and return. And we can show old legacy products or just the new ones. And here I'll pick a GT1080 and we can see the figures on the right hand side, the resolution, the throw ratio, everything about it, even the dimensions. This screen now uh, changes to update, and this particular projector size is for the GT1080. So we can guarantee that when we place multiples together, they won't bump into each other. Now, you can see the uh, kind of frowny lip up there, and I can kind of change the direction of this uh, projector. We know that this projector produces mostly uh, negative uh, angle screen, so we'll just uh, go down and move this up to the top like that. And that's exactly what we expect to see on a curved screen. And we can pull this projector back, and manip manipulate it wherever we want to. We can twist it, tilt it, anything we want. So now we've got a projector in there. Let's change some more screens and see what we've got. That was a cylinder screen, so we can go on to change. Let's see what partial sphere will look like. And it immediately updates. And we can again, we can change size or anything on that uh, unit. Uh, full domes, exactly what you'd expect. And uh, these are th other things you can do. You can decide on whether it's actually um, front projection, rear projection, or is it just, so I'll just select front only, and it's only in the front of the dome. And, you know, just with different types of screen, back only, screen material. So now I can go a bit further. I can decide to um, change the shape of this um, dome because it may not have, a, it may have a slice in it, so we can truncate it by just adjusting the top. Well, again, we can adjust the size as well. And then we can go on to uh, caves. Um, we can decide to take out the um, uh, the front here, or the back, move it around to decide to change it. We can decide, well, what do we want a top in it? Let's put a top in it. Boom, there's a the top. So we can do anything we want with these environments very, very quickly. Uh, flat screens, well, that's pretty self-explanatory. That's the kind of standard that everybody's using, isn't it, a flat screen? So we can just uh, put that on a flat screen and see what happens. And you can see that the keystone would have to happen on this particular uh, way I've got this angled at the moment. So you'd have to keystone that one to make sure it works fits that screen. Um, or align it straight, of course, which would be the m most sane thing to do, probably. And then we have that particular flat plane. Uh, moving on to screens, one other thing we can do, models. And there are many, many different model types we can import. And I'm just going to pick, um, let's pick one of these new um, ones i just done, which is a um, six-foot guy. Incidentally, here's the uh, model types we can import. You can see there's all Blender files, Collider, Quake, all types of um, input, auto desks, you know, everything, light wave models, all the types that you'd ever really want. So I'm going to import that guy, and he's come from my SketchUp library, so he's um, a scalable. So for a six foot guy, I need to do a scale of that. And there he is with a wire mesh. I can take the uh, wire mesh and make him into a normal material, and you can see our projected image on the actual object, which I can kind of, you know, adjust and rotate or wh wherever I need to do to that to get it right. So really easy, really fast. And uh, these models can come in handy because you may want to use it as a shadowing model. So does the guy shadow the screen? Well, to do that, we would just alternate the um, way we've done it. So we'll sort of go, I want a cylinder as the screen. And um, we'll just move that down and maybe move that screen up a little bit. So we'll start it at two feet. There it is. And we'll bring in our model. So we've got these object models. And we'll just um, go and select him. So the same guy. We'll give him a, he's a new. Bring him in. And scale him. 
and we can instantly see at the back there behind there's the shadow of this model as we move this projector around we can see the shadow changes you can even see the hair so everything this model has is going to be in that picture and that enables us to really find out where we need to put these projectors for people standing in front of screens and do we need to move the actual physical screen to make sure it doesn't occlude it which is what we'd have to do there so that's about as close as this guy can get to that screen without him shadowing it and obviously we could put more of these projectors in in situations other things we can do is complete rooms we can actually bring in an environmental complete room so I'll just bring uh, a design up here and I'll bring in an actual arena much larger than just a single room and it will change the edges again and there's my arena so as a 3D model we've imported you can see all the chairs and there's my projector which I can move around and I can actually put um, cameras in this um, seats and look through the cameras and see if the people will not be able to see this um, image because of the pillar and then they'll have to look at this one we can also do something else in the environment as well while we're here we can say well what would it look like with my actual image so you can bring your actual images in here um, by just going to the projectors and select an image and then finding the image that you want to put on the screen and send it and now it's going through the projector lens onto the screen and that's what we're seeing and of course everything is real time we see the shape change as we go we see it hit the uh, tops of the chairs there obviously we wouldn't be doing that but that's the kind of idea so total arenas can be imported into this thing anything goes now let's try a real world uh, solution I'll bring up one of the ones we've recently done um, this was in um, Geneva and Lyon we have two of them going at the moment uh, both using uh, Optima 316 projectors and how we did this is we just went to the screen and we said we wanted a 180 degrees either way well of course I can just change that automatically and so show you how, how we did that so here's what it would be like if I changed the back to um, 90 degrees one way and you can see it takes a chunk out of the piece and I can put it back to 180 because that's what we need uh, the green uh, object you see in the top there was an object I imported nothing more than uh, from SketchUp and I've colored it just so I can see it I can change the color of these objects just so I can change them to say well this is what that is uh, so I know what they're doing Now this was just a metal railing uh, box section that we're going to use or we used to actually mount the mounts for these projectors and so I wanted to find out that if I um, put that up there and put the projectors dead on the center and each projector does have a center mount position if I unclick this here you can see a little dot this little center is the center of this physical projector so if I had a mount on here that would be the dead center and then to align it to my mountings I would just put a mounting there and align it to the center of the rail and then I know that I'm actually on that and that's the correct position for my uh, screen now the double uh, light areas is the actual overlap blending so if I select that projector again and move it you can see that I'm moving the projector around and so I'm also moving this uh, blend region and the darker regions is where it would naturally be um, shining darker so this is what I will have and I did have for blending now we slightly overshot this because the um, particular museum wanted to have people duck underneath this which is what they did there and so it you know gave me a bit of uh, issues about how we're going to do that so we ended up having to um, overshoot the bottom slightly and using our warp and blend software to uh, fix the issue uh, to test that out that that was going to work I actually was able to, and you're able to do here you can analyze this um, for warp and blending and we have this analyze tool we can do pixel size pixel resolution and the warp and blending would allow me to put in images uh, directly into um, a warp and blend test and it's going to split them up and divide them and blend this region out if it works and it'll tell us if it does or not and it's going through the process of just uh, working that out and it works which it did so here's a, an image um, large enough to go through there and we can kind of you know get in there and find out what it is we can also say well put a camera on the viewpoint of a six foot guy and look through that camera so now I'm going to go to the show cameras and my little named eye point and that's what that guy sees standing there and of course if his uh, eyes aren't standard uh, eye levels we can actually change that because you know everybody sees something different I can actually change the way he views it so that's for 100 degrees of view of a person but someone with poor eyesight may only see 60 and that's what he kind of gets so you know we can kind of work it all out for different people and find out what the average of a view of the person standing in the center would be and that line we see there is my join point that I know in this particular case that's where I wanted the um, heat blend of the screen material to be so I, we heat welded the screen and I needed to know um, was it there or not and, and with the um, 
cylinder type screen it allows you to have an end point and start point so now I know that this is the direction of my first projector which will be this one here is projector one and it goes rotation that way until you have projector eight on this side so I know my moving material is facing the certain direction uh, for this room the um, environment of the squares that you see there um, that helps me make sure that I'm doing everything correct so I, I've got in here a 25 foot um, of squares and um, I can change the um, size of the squares so I can help myself to a 2.5 um, foot grid which will help me know exactly am I within the uh, perimeter of the of the building actually the building was um, uh, 35 uh, um, was like that so 35 feet I had so there's gave me and uh, showed me how much spacing I got and I could put people around the outside and see what they see and have they got enough room to rotate around the whole building and still see this uh, unit so to see what this is like if I go back through here and I kind of you know put this up like this this is what we kind of saw when we was inside and here's the actual real thing and you can see there's the rail of the projectors um, the computer is actually hidden underneath that um, dish there and here's the actual screen frame and I could have imported that frame to make sure that it worked but there was no real need because I knew that the height of this was um, around six inches so I, d I knew that I had a six inch height down to to the top of the thing so all I needed to worry about was did this work and was the distance correct and would it blend and as you can see from the real thing exactly what happened we didn't do anything more than actually um, uh, take these measurements uh, that we had here we know that the uh, screen environment here is 12.5 radius so uh, it's um, 25 24 feet and the height of it was uh, 5.3 feet so we knew that the image uh, that they gave us which was this here test pattern images was going to work um, so that's all we had to worry about is the resolution was correct the height is correct and if so we can export this into DXF and to AutoCAD and carry on buildings and framework but in our system we didn't have to worry about that because we already just know how to uh, roll this uh, material to make this work and you can see there's that height offset of six inches and we can do all sorts of measurements in here if we wanted to we can go in here and say I want to analyze or you know work out um, a distance so I can go in here and, and click on to uh, one point and uh, measure over to another point and it tells me that this is you know eight feet uh, nearly across which is what it was um, so I can go to any point at any point it won't let me do free space it only goes to the next object so I can say how far he is away from the, the center or, or each projector is away from the center and the distance that we picked was to make sure that the exhaust from the one projector had no way of getting to the intake of the others and here we can physically see it if I change these projectors out to a different one and I went to back to the, the, the unit and said well let's get a much uh, larger uh, unit and select it you can see it gets physically larger I would now know that if I started putting loads of those in <laughs> that they would get too close to each other and I would really, I really have to think differently about how it's going to work and what type of lens we're going to use so these are the these are the things that the projection calculator can really tell you very very quickly is whether you've made a mistake or not and physically the client would like to know maybe how close this can, guy can get to the edge before there are shadows so obviously if I keep him on the floor here and move him um, to the edge he can get pretty close to the screen um, over there with only just you know he's only a couple of feet away before he starts to shadow because we have it raised up and those were important things for the client to know that uh, when we uh, did this install it was going to work and as I say all we did for the test we tested the electronics we tested the um, projectors we didn't actually test the um, the ring because we didn't want to damage the screen material if, in case so um, we went on spec that it would work because the projection calculator said it would and that's exactly what happened um, so there's lots of um, things in here that you can do I haven't covered but this is just the main stuff you know if you want to put images through you saw that um, you can put mirrors on projectors for, uh, if you want to add a mirror to a projector and that would go with the projector um, you can put eye points to do analyzing of things like uh, pixel resolution pixel size there's just so many um, really easy things to do here and you can export this if you said that you had clients uh, who just want to see this as a, a tool they could just Get, take off the important detail so nobody sees that and then you can actually just export this uh, as an image so you can just type in an image and, and export it as a ping and that way it can be um, used for um, sales material and stuff like that obviously what we're thinking of is doing is uh, making these um, uh, you know databases um, larger and the way we can do it we 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 got 7500 in here now uh, all the companies but you can actually add your own um, uh, extras in there so if it's a custom type we can choose the physical 
uh, size of the projector we can choose uh, where the uh, where the actual um, uh, lens is on the plastic and we can rotate that and make sure we're doing all the measurements correctly and we can type in everything and then just apply so you can add custom ones just the things that may be coming out and new projectors new um, things that you want to test and you can test out the resolution and everything and add it to the database which is quite handy and our database updates do not um, remove a database add additional products that you put in there so that's all separate so hopefully this is um, helpful this is the projection calculator and uh, I'm Chris from Pixelwix and I'll see you on the next one